Godfrey, what's good? What's up, Welcome. man? I'm back. <laughs> Welcome back to Vlad TV. Vlad TV, and guess what I'm wearing? Look. Black Panther. Look, at, look this is a 60s shit. Yep. Huh? Should I nope. do a Wakanda challenge? I wanted to do a Wakanda challenge. <laughs> Wakanda challenge. Like, well, you called, me the, you called me up the other day. Yes, you said I did. that you wanted to come in and talk about the Black Panther movie. Because you said you were going to see it. Right. And I said, I know knowing him, he's going to be like, I didn't think it was that great. <laughs> No, I just didn't think it was great. I just think Black Panther kind of sucks. <laughs> the past couple weeks have been so inspiring, so energetic. There's just something in the air culturally for uh, black people. I'm going to say it. you damn right. This, this movie, just the buildup of Black Panther, I mean, it's been, I mean, I've been, it's like, a, it's like waiting on Christmas on a Christmas toy. You know what I mean? Like, holy shit, what's in the package? The, the the trailers were fucking me up. Like before, you know, months before. I mean, and I and I didn't I didn't know what to expect. I was like, I wonder. I hope it's not going to be corny and all this other shit. Then when it, it and it's funny because I was in Washington D.C. I went to the African American Cultural Museum. Okay, I was there every day for four hours. Okay, first of all, if any of you have not seen the African American Cultural Museum, you are you you need to make that your goal. White and black people and everybody need to make the Smithsonian built a beautiful museum, and the architect is Nigerian. Yeah, power to the Nigerians. Very proud. Anyway, he <laughs> it is an amazing design, and so funny how that museum is is brown. Out of all those white buildings, the Pentagon, you got the Capitol, and then there's, there's this big ass brown building standing in front of the Washington Monument. It's like this big white dick and this fucking <laughs> brown building, and it's one of the greatest museums. And it's like it's it's packed every day, and and then they showed the Black Panther at the museum at the Oprah Winfrey Movie Theater because Oprah Winfrey donated two, $22 million to build a theater. And of course she named it after her because Oprah don't play that shit. You know, Oprah will make the weather change. That's how powerful she is. Whenever it rains, I go, Oprah's mad. You understand? So Oprah was like, I got you a theater. <laughs> so, so they showed it there. I didn't get to see it, but the anticipation, the energy in the, in the air, and all the pride that is going around with, you see little black kids dressing as Black Panther. You see just people dressing up in African garb and just, you know what I mean? And there was just, just this energy, man. Every time you saw somebody, you're like, uh, Wakanda, Wakanda. And I was like, and, it, and people were doing this. And this is before I saw the movie. I said, what the fuck is this? And then now I'm like, ah, well, yo, I, I mean, the movie was phenomenal. The movie was great. I mean, it's a Marvel movie, first off. It's a Marvel movie. Marvel makes pretty good movies, all right? And the thing is, is like, it means much more to African Americans. Like, oh, I don't expect a white person to get the same shit that I, I get out of it. I don't expect an Asian person to, I don't expect that. Unless it's a, for us, people will say, oh, some people might say, it was a cool movie. For me, it was on some different le it was a whole bunch of levels of psychological, socio socioeconomic, cultural levels. It was so many levels that that movie, every time I watched certain parts, I was like, fuck yeah, yep. I wasn't that loud black person that talks in the theater though. I was just, it was to myself. I was doing this a lot. Word, 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 y yup. But, I, <laughs> but I'm not, you know, you know how you go to some theaters and people yell at the screen, that's what the fuck I'm talking about. And they're, and, and they're loud with the popcorn and the, and the plate chip. That, that, I, 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 hell yeah. I wasn't that dude. I was like this. Word. I agree. I agree. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh, uh, mm, that's so true. It's so true. But I'm a sophisticated black man. Oh, oh, oh my God. I, I want to scream, but I can't. It was like that. It was hitting me. It was, I was getting bo psychological body shots from this movie. And it was just... It was an all, it's an all black cast, you know, and, and I want to make sure you all know it's not a black movie. It's just a movie and it happens to be majority black cast. It was a wonderful cast. I mean, Forrest Whitaker, Angela Bassett, you know, Chad Bozeman, you had Michael B. Jordan. Everybody looked amazing. 
It was dignified. We weren't cooning. Even with the African thing, we didn't coon it. We made it authentic. And it was, it was, that's what I was like. It wasn't like, okay, listen, we got our movies. A lot of our black movies usually ghetto movies, you know? My baby, oh Lord, who shot my baby? You know what I mean? Or, motherfucker, I'm trying to better myself. I'm trying to better myself. You know, that's always our movies, right? I'm trying to better myself, man. Lord, Lord, the police. That shit. I get that. But this one was, we, it wasn't, nobody got pregnant, you know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? Nobody dropped out of school. No, it wasn't no hood shit. It wasn't really any gangs, you know what I mean? It was just, it was the next level of where we, we should be. We, we are, and another thing, it's breaking records. It continues to break records. The biggest, biggest Marvel movie ever, you understand? This is not, this, this has happened many times, even in television. You know, Living Color brought Fox to number one. African-American power. Eddie Murphy made Saturday Night Live number one when it was in third place. The Cosby Show made NBC number one overnight. NBC was in third place before The Cosby Show. You can look it up, okay? Empire. Empire got a little weird for me, but I don't watch it anymore because it got a little too... <laughs> okay, you know what I'm saying? I love the first episode of Empire. You know, even, you know, you know, because I love something about uh, uh, Terrence Howard. He sounds light skinned. I don't know why he just goes, I am Lucius Lyon. This is my empire. <laughs> he sounds light skinned. I don't know what it is. And then it got good. Then after a while, everybody was tonguing each other. I was like, oh, I mean, you know, teach his own, but it was a little too much tongue. Every episode was like, on the next empire. <laughs> this is my empire. <laughs> this is my empire. Ooh, yeah, can't do it. Now, but Empire broke records too. It brought Fox, number. It, Fox hadn't been number one in 30 something years, but Empire brought it to its prominence. See, black images sell, we sell. And we're proving this and Black Panther has just put the um, icing on the cake with saying, you know what? We, we are marketable people. We are viable. We are, we are human beings. We can, we can, we have star power and, and, and black money. This is economics. Now we're putting money into this movie. We're making this movie big. We're the ones going to see it three, four, five times. Cause I'm not done seeing it. I only saw it once. I'm about to see it two, three more times because it's a homework assignment for me. I mm. want to watch it more often cause I'm going to get more out of it because it's starting discussions, especially amongst African-Americans. It's actually starting discussions amongst Africans, amongst Caribbeans, amongst African-Americans, amongst black Latinos, if when the ones that actually claim their blackness. <laughs> it's, sorry guys, but some of you guys be like, I know black, I know black, I know black, impossible, I know black, I'm Dominican, I'm Puerto Rican, I know black. Be looking just like me. Be like, be having the same hair. I be touching you like, it's not the same, it's not the same, it's not the same, papi, it's not the same. They try to salsa that shit off. I be like, no, it's not the same. I know black. Negro nunca, nunca. I know ne no, no, nunca. I know black. I'm like, no, you black. No, no, no. I know black. Dominica. I go, I know, but you're black. No, 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 papi. I know black. No, no, black, black, black. <laughs> and I have a video of, with a plantain in my Instagram. What's up, everybody? You see this yellow banana in my hand? This is called a plantain. For all you Caribbean people, all you Dominican, Republic people, Puerto Rico, any of you, if you have this in your food, if you are eating a plantain, you are an African. Do you understand me? I don't care whether you're Spanish African, French African, you are African. Whether you like it or not, whether you try to deny your Africanness, if this is in your diet, okay, a big yellow banana, listen even a green one, you are an African, so you better recognize, okay, plantain, banana, dodo, whatever, platano, tostone, you are a fucking African, so you better respect it, huh, you are black, there's nothing you can do. <laughs>
And what I meant was you have African heritage. There's African blood. Do you know it was mainly Dominican men <laughs> that said, we're not Africans. <laughs> I go, did you get the joke? You have African blood in you. First of all, when I was in the Dominican Republic, my friend, white dude said, man, I feel like I'm in little Africa. I said, look at all these black people, you know? And it was like, it, look at my d Instagram and it's, I have it. I'm holding a, 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 a beat up ripe plantain. And I said, if you have this in your diet, you have African it, you're an African. All the Spanish people were mad as shit. The Puerto Ricans kind of held they held they own. They know they had African blood, but a lot of motherfuckers didn't get it. And they said I was separating them from their culture. I'm like, I don't get what? <laughs> anyway, so this, this, I mean, this, this whole, I love what's going on right now with this movie. This movie, I'm very proud of it. It was a very good movie. And, you know, I, I, there were some people like, I heard the, the alt-right wanted to, to um, stop the movie. They just wanted to protest the movie because it was, there were not enough white people in it because white people are the default in movies. I go, first of all, it says Black Panther. I mean, it's an actual animal, but the fact that it says black, just know you ain't gonna be in that shit. Listen, I knew there weren't gonna be any white people on Friends, remember the sitcom? Just by the song. I said, there are no black people in that shit. That opening is the whitest shit I've ever heard in my life. Well, the, the Hobbit guy was in Black Panther. The Hobbit guy? The oh, Hobbit guy. Oh, the guy who played um, the FBI agent. Right. Right? He was, mm -hmm. I mean, he, I liked his part because he wasn't that significant, even though he, you know, he went into the spaceship and they kind of made him kind of save stuff. They had to put the white savior in a little bit. And I was like, why couldn't a black girl that was helping him be in that ship? But he, they, you know, Disney was like, okay now. We just want the white guy to do a little bit of the saving, okay? I know it's a very African-American dominated movie. I don't know how they talk at Disney. I know it's African-American dominated. Maybe we're doing this. I know it's an African dominated movie, but we're going to have the white guy do the ship. We know we're going to have the black girl control it, but we're going to have him like kind of um, be sort of like a um, Han Solo and he's going to destroy <laughs> some of the ships, okay? That's just a fair compromise. Is, is that how they hold hands? When, isn't it how rich people do? So that's what we're going to do, okay? We just, I mean, no, I know it's an African-American movie. I know I don't want, I just, we just want to make sure it crosses over, okay? Um, it's going to cross over. It's fucking Marvel, okay? It's Marvel. People had to understand that. It's not like, hey, man, I'm going to go see some black movie with some black people with powers. No, it's a Marvel movie. As a kid, I collected comic books, and I had the Black Panther, but a lot of the black heroes back then were very... There were auxiliary heroes, like there was the Falcon. He was a brother dressed like a Falcon. He was a, had a mask and he barely did shit. He just flew and shit. Feathers would come off. Motherfucker would be like, oh shit, my wings and shit. And it was in the 70s, so he was like, hey Jack, I'm the Falcon, baby. Fuck is going on in this bitch? And maybe like, hey man, there's a motherfucker dressed as a bird. Yeah, I'm the Falcon, bitch. I'll drop shit on your head. That's my power, nigga, what? And it was weird. And then we had Luke Cage, who was Power Man. He was Power Man and Iron Fist. There, there was a uh, uh, combo, Power Man and Iron Fist. And Luke Cage had the, he had a chain around his head, you know? And he, yeah, he had like a, a headband and he had the, a yellow shirt, a yellow shirt with the blue sexy pants and his balls. You can see the imprint of his balls and shit. It was like Billy Blanks and shit. And, and, and Power Man was just a big, powerful, bulletproof dude. I used to have his comic books. And it was just like Power Man. Yeah, you just a strong brother. You just strong. And you know, all the white co all the white heroes had like like ray lasers coming out there, you know, pew pew. But a black dude don't have no laser. He's just like, I'm just gonna punch the wall real hard. I'm Power Man. Shit. Ah, uh, fuck that. And Superman could fly. And he don't and you know, we don't got no black superheroes fly. None of us fly. We just I'm run fast and I'm gonna break the wall with my fist. <laughs> But Power Man, then there was Cyborg. We had Cyborg, mm. he's a half robot and then half black. Maybe he's maybe that part of him is white. I don't know. Yeah. But he was like half silver. Maybe that's like he's actually a, a biracial. He might be a, a bi but you know, he saw the black side like, yeah, uh, what's up? <laughs> and then this side was like, who knows what race that would have been, you know? There's Cyborg. Then there was, there's a uh, static shock. There's static shot. There's a lot of like young black superheroes. And now the new Spider-Man 
is a black Latino, Miles Morales. So they're trying to kill two birds with one stone. They, he's a black kid, but he'd probably be like, I'm Dominican. I know black. I spider man. I spider man. He's probably sp I spider man. <laughs> I sp <laughs> want me to sing the song in Spanish? Spider man, spider man. Do whatever a spider can. Spin a whip, any side. Catch a thief, your life fly. Look out. Here comes the spider man. Ping, 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 ping. Is he strong? Listen, boy. He got radio at the blow. Can he swing on a thread? Take a look overhead. Hey there, here comes the spider man. Spider man, spider man. Don't I mean, I hope they don't make him too Latino. <laughs> well, I actually looked him up. So I guess the actor is white who's playing the new Spider-Man. But well, the they still book... have white actors playing Spider-Man, and they need to use it, make him black now. Like, right, right. Because I guess in the comic book uh, Miles Morales is a fictional black character well, who's playing Spider-Man now. Well, comic books are fiction anyway, right? Isn't that redundant? You just right, said no, no, it's a no, fictional. No, no, no. But I'm saying that that the that the current Spider-Man and like you know like the yeah, Spider-Man in the movies, Peter Parker is a white dude. In yeah. the movie, still. They're yeah. all white dudes. All the superheroes. <laughs> all of them are white. They're no... Where's the Asian superhero? Where's the Asian superhero? I mean, listen, I understand Stan Lee, who I've met three times. I've met Stan Lee three times at Power Entertainment with his partner, Gil. And you know how Stan Lee talks. Hey, how are you doing? True believers. Excelsior. He told me when I was in his office, you know what the first breakout Marvel movie was? Blade was the mm. first breakout Marvel movie, and guess what? We didn't know who the fuck Blade was. Unless you're a comic book real super nerd, nobody knew who Blade was. We were like, I just know it's a Wesley Snipes movie. It's Wesley Snipes. And, the, yeah. and when I saw the trailer, I was like, shit, I'm going to see that shit because I'm a Snipes fan. And I was like, and he's a real martial artist. He killed that shit. Blade blew the box office away. Blade 2 was cold. Then Blade 3... This is the part where, where uh, uh, Wesley Snipes and David Goyer had problems. Because he was like, why do you got the wrong director directing me? And why do you... It, it was too white. It got... Ryan Reynolds came in. I was like, oh, it's all white and shit. And the third one had to be whack. You know, for some reason, it seems like when black people are on a roll, I don't know, the powers that be, they look white to me. They, could, they find a way to fuck our shit up. I don't know who it is, but Living Color, they did it. Scary movie with Keen Iron, they fucked that up. Um, Cleveland show, why is the Cleveland show canceled? Why the fuck is the Cleveland show canceled? It's, it's a part of the Simpsons, right? Mm -hmm. Simpsons well, no, have been no, no, on. No, wait. no, part of a... What, a family guy? Family guy. Family guy. But the Simpsons has been on for 700 years. The Simpsons are on their 900,000 uh, episode. Family guy's been on a long time. It even got canceled and came back. Cleveland, who's a great character, why does the black one get canceled? They don't even want to see cartoon. And then white people do the black voices. What the fuck? They don't even want us to do our own voices. How much does racism leak into everything? You don't even want us to play black people. They don't want, do you remember Charlie Brown? Mm -hmm. Charlie Brown, there was a character named Franklin. He was a black kid. He looked just like Charlie Brown, but black. So basically they just put brown face over Charlie Brown. He never had lines. He never said shit. Everybody said shit. And I don't even think he had a home. If you ever watched Charlie Brown, check that shit out. But um, Blade was the number one, was the, was the first breakout movie. And now we have Black Panther, another African-American movie leads. And we're going to break records again. You know what I'm saying? So we are sellable. You know, I think there shouldn't be this gap. We shouldn't have to wait on like from Blade to now, you know how many years that is? Why the fuck should it be that long? You know what I mean? That's a long time. We now, I, hopefully I'm praying that this will, will, now they'll start to reach out and, and have heroes of different races and stuff like that, that, not just, you know what I mean? Not just all white dudes. I mean, white dudes, you got, dude, some of the white dudes play three damn heroes. Ryan Reynolds says he's, he's, he's Deadpool and motherfuckers. You know, he's a, uh, what is it, um, Green Lantern? He, they, play, they play 90 of them. Shit. Right. I actually looked it up. Blade came out in 98, so that means 20 years had passed. 20 between. years. It seems like they always wait 20 years for black people to, to do something new. Like the talk show game. 
It's all white guys in suits. All of them are white. We waited 20 years for Arsenio to come back. The same black dude. You waited 20 years to bring back the same black dude and then you cancel them. <laughs> what the fuck? I ain't gonna lie though. I tried to watch Arsenio Hall's show. I, his band got him canceled. Them shits, they, they, were, go, they were whack. <laughs> Anytime you see a dude playing an organ and he does this, you gotta go. When he did this shit, I said, well, this ain't the 80s. What the fuck you doing this gyrating with the... Only guitarists do that. I said, he's about to get canceled. His band's gonna fuck him up. So, I saw Black Panther. You saw... Okay, you, I, I couldn't wait. You saw Black Panther. What did I you think I saw Black about Panther. It? What'd you think? Well, number one, I'm very glad they made Black Panther. Yes. Uh, I'm very glad they had an all-black cast an African theme. It wasn't a slavery movie. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. You know, you, you forgot that genre of black films. You know, you say, you know, oh. the, the slavery genre. Sla I'm, I'm done with slavery. And they just finished doing slavery movies. They're going to do super slaves. Watch, that's going to be the next superhero movie. It's going to be super slaves. Right. Uh, I thought, I thought uh, you know, the acting was good. But to be dead honest, mm -hmm. As a film, as a standalone film, mm -hmm. I wouldn't put it as one of my top five uh, Marvel films. Okay, what's your top five Marvel film? Better films, I thought, than, than this was Guardians of the Galaxy, the first one. Okay. Captain America Civil War. Okay, that was hot. Deadpool. Deadpool was fun. Uh, X-Men, X2. X-Men, first one I liked. Yeah, and the first one as well. Logan was hard. Yeah. Uh, the first Iron Man I thought was really great. That was dope. You know, I like this way better than, like, Doctor Strange. Right, Strange was... But Strange had always been, like, kind of corny in, in, yeah. in the comic books. You're like... Mm -hmm. You know, I liked it better than the Thor movies. I liked it better than the Hulk movies. Right, right. I, I'd, I would put it somewhere in the middle. That's true. Top ten. Somewhere somewhere in the in the middle. Top, top ten Marvel okay. movies. Okay. I but I feel like my only issue, and you know, I was talking to a, a friend of mine about this the other day, mm -hmm. you know, who, who everybody knows, but since it was a private conversation, yeah. I'm not going to put it out there. Um, you know, the, the thing about it is that with all, with the, with the climate of what's happening today and everyone's scared to say anything that goes against the general wave, I felt that like Rotten Tomatoes giving this the highest rating of any movie ever, <laughs> I thought was a little bit ridiculous. Why? Because I would not say this was the best movie that's ever Do come out. Do you think they did it to just get disapproval from all this African American hype? They, was like, they were like, this would be a smart business move, Rotten Tomatoes. You know what I mean? It could have been a business move because some people ride the hype. It's like, you know what, you know what it's like? It's like they... When someone says this person's the funniest comedian in America and it's not fucking true, you know, but, but it's like Vanity Fair is like, well, we should do this. They're popular. It could have been that. Well, well look, uh, I mean, we reported on this, I think, but there was one like official movie critic that didn't give the movie a thumbs up and everyone's like, look, this one guy gave a negative review. He messed up the perfect rating, you know, like I'm sure he's white. Yep. He's white. Yeah. You see, <laughs> it's like. It's one of those things where it's like, there were better movies that, that have come out. Like, you know, like, like the Marvel movies that I've named and so forth. But to give this, I think anyone who says anything negative about this movie is too scared over, oh, you're a racist. You, you know, you don't like it because you're a racist. Damn no. right. That's why you know? I asked my white friends, I said, what you think about Black Panther? <laughs> huh? You uh, thought it was great. Say something. Like, say something. I, thought. I dare you. That's, but you got to uh, ask them like this. So, mm -hmm. so my white friends, sit down. I want to ask y'all, y'all saw the movie, huh? So what y'all think? What you think about the all black cast? Was it good? Did you like the plot? <laughs> They're like, no, we did it. We thought it was, we thought it was amazing. No, listen, it, it, it was, was a amazing. good movie. And you know, and I'll go ahead and this is a spoiler alert. For example, the, the fight scene, remember in the beginning where he was fighting the dude with the gorilla mask? Yeah. I thought that was brilliant. Right. Brilliant. The way they had it on the waterfall and the spears. Yeah, and it's like, yo, like, right. oh, I'm like, oh, shit. Like, this is, 
Dope. This movie's on on the next level. Like, right. yo, I'm 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 feeling you know, and the dudes with the shoulders and everything. Like, you like you I, like this shit, right? I liked it. I liked it. I, that I was, was feeling that, was that whole thing. But the finale fight between the Black Panther and Killmonger, like on the train set, you know, on, on the train tracks, was like, eh, yeah. Eh. When they had, the, the, yeah, I, yeah, I got you. I wanted eh. it to be like straight up, square up, boom, 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 boom. Well, it just wasn't an epic fight. And this was supposed to be the grand finale of the film. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And the earlier fight was was just a better fight. You know? Maybe it was a better fight because I see where you're coming from, but it was a better fight because this was his initiation, though. Right, but kingdom. this is this is the main villain. This is Killmonger. This yeah, is who but, but he's fighting for the kingdom, though, like to be king. And so right. the man said, I'm gonna take over this kingdom. So it was much more like, oh, is Chala gonna get this? You know? Well, I mean, he was still fighting for the kingdom at the end, right? So I mean, if he would have lost, then So the crescendo wasn't good enough for you. I, I just felt like, you know, it wasn't a perfect film, and this is how everyone is is painting it as a perfect film. I thought it was a good film. It was cool. I I I, I you know Listen, I like the fact that I saw it. Either way, I'm going to make it a race thing because you know me. <laughs> a lot of people complain and say, Godfrey, why are you always making things about race? And I love my videos. They always, you know, I have another video where I talk about there's a black guy playing blues. See that? My man right there. Playing the blues. Black man playing the blues. That's how it should be. It should not be a white man playing the blues. I'm tired of seeing white people play our fucking music. The blues means blues. Black people being oppressed. White folks, please stay away from our goddamn music. This is what the fuck blues is. Yeah. I mean, yo, John Mayer. You my man, but fuck that. Stay the fuck off that shit. This is for us. Our shit. That's right. And you give him money, white man. That's right. That's right. You bow down. Damn right. Fuck that. White people, no more blues playing. It's not about you. Stop playing black music. It's not for you. We created black music because you oppressed us. (laughs) I know you guys love my videos. Fuck off. It's a joke, of course, but it, whites play blues, but it's amazing how they love black oppressive music. It's very weird. It's like, I love the blues. Yeah, it's called the blues. We were oppressed. We were feeling blue. It's not called the happies. And I got white dudes getting all angry. And we should be able to enjoy your mute. Shut up. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? And I'm a race person, but I'm going to tell you. I love talking about race because you know why I like talking about race? Let me tell you why. Because it came to me first. I didn't do shit. I was called names. I was stopped by cops. People harassed me. People followed me around the store, thought I was stealing. Shit like that. So they've conditioned me to think about race. It's amazing how the people that complain and bitch about you talking about race are the ones that gave you that fucking mentality. It's Mm. amazing. You know what I mean? So, (laughs) So I took it as a... It was a Marvel movie. I've seen dope movies like that. We've seen them. If you're a Marvel head, you can Mm -hmm. compare and say, this one was better than that movie. This was better. The fight scenes. Blade, to me, is still one of the coldest movies to me. You know? I agree. Of course, the special effects aren't as as good as now, but Snipes was the, man, one and two? Shit. And there's Marvel movies that are just as equal, but symbolically... Right. Is the reason why it's taken, it's gone to the next level because right. it's taken 20 years for us to have this movie. It's an all black cast, man. It's an all black cast. And the cast, I always like to talk about the African diaspora. The guy that plays, um, um, who's um, the big dude who plays, uh, who was fighting T'Challa at the beginning, he's from Trinidad, Tobago. One girl's from, is Guyanese. There's African Americans. There's, it's like that. It also, talked about the African diaspora. Like, we all looked African there, because we're all, it's almost like an anthropological statement. We're all from the same source. We're all Africans, you know what I'm saying? I I, I took that from an anthropological standpoint. Then there was the battle between, and me being Nigerian, and growing up in America, my parents, I'm 100% Nigerian, my sister was born there, me and my brother born here because of civil war and all this, you know, the immigrant story. 
I always had to be in a dichotomy of dealing with African Americans hating black um, um, Africans and being with Africans hating African Americans. So it was always like my friends are American, I'm American, my friends are African too, but we would go head to head sometimes going, I remember um, black people would call me, you old black African booty scratcher. I didn't know we had black African booty scratchers. I didn't know, I, I would picture an African going, my booty, I have to scratch it. Africans scratch their booties. All the, and no one ever did that. And they would call us names and they'd be like, yo man, I, yo, if we go to Africa, we gonna see monkeys and shit and, and elephants and shit. And you know, you in your head, and it, they gave me a, a, a kind of a low self-esteem, a little bit, but not too much, because Africans are so proud. And I'd be like, I don't, and, I, and my parents would be like, we will go to Africa, so we will go to visit. I'm like, no, nah, I'm good, I'm good. I don't want to see no monkey hit me in the head or nothing. I don't want to see no. They, but the, my friends, African American friends, had me thinking about this shit, watching Tarzan movies. So what America would do was they show Africans in primitive situations, flies on our face, big bellies and shit, right? And then in Africa, they would show black people as thugs, drug dealers. So when we come and meet each other, we're like, you would, you are a drug dealer. Oh, shut your African booty. You know, so we would have that. It was purposely done to keep us fighting. And at the same time, when you go to Africa, white people are living all up in that bitch, chilling the fuck out, taking all minerals, taking everything, diamonds, everything. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. that's. Another thing that that movie did for me was it explained that dichotomy, that fight between African Americans and Africans, and we, and that's that's why Killmonger and T'Challa, it was that those two different philosophies. Both of them were correct, but I was on Team Killmonger. I liked Killmonger because Killmonger, you know what he represented? He represented the cry of African American people. He represented the cry of African American males who are the most hated and despised in this in this in society. He, he also represented empowerment for the people who don't have a lot. He represented black people being abused. We need protection. You know the vibranium. The vibranium was that mineral. That was that, that, that important mineral that, that healed them, protected them. It was everything. And that, to me, he, when, when Killmonger said, yo, you killed my father, man. Africans killed my father. And you left me there. You know, it's basically crying out. African Americans have always been crying out to be feel connected to Africa because it wasn't Afri African Americans fault that they were in this situation. It's not African Americans fault that they're Smiths and Jacksons and O'Neills. They were given those names. They were torn away from their families. They were killed, raped. Black women were raped every day. We were raped of everything, dignity, the whole night. So he's representing all of that and saying, hey, man, we are hated all over the world. Caribbeans, all kinds of black people. We need this vibranium to protect ourselves. I'm tired of getting shot by the cops. Why can't we have some shit to defend ourselves? I was like, yup. I agreed with everything he said. And Chichala was like, we don't want to do that. We can't give, he's like, we're going to keep it for ourselves. He goes, why are you keeping it for yourselves? And it also addressed African leadership. African leadership has been shitty for a long time. There are leaders that are there for 50 fucking years. I actually looked it up and the 10 poorest countries in the world are all African countries. It's ridiculous. Yeah, it's with like, you know, uh, with a yearly sa average salary of like $700. That's crazy, places. but we gotta check India, fuck that. <laughs> We got to check India shit. I, I, you know, I, I think they came out with that list because Black Panther came out. So you never know because white people know how to time shit. Guess what? The top poor, the top 10 poor African countries right after Black Panther. You know what I mean? They're good for shitting on like trying to shut shit down. So I'm going to check on that, you know, for a white guy to tell me that there's 10 poor African countries. I got to check that shit. I don't trust your shit because okay. you'll be like this. Hey, Godfrey. Not trying to be an asshole, but uh, Black Panther's <laughs> doing great. But I want to tell you about the uh, poorest uh, countries in the world. Uh, well, it's, no, um, no, Africa. The, the list, the list did not come out recently. It was an older list. What'd I you just say? looked. At, I, it, no, the list itself was an older list. It's oh, was like it an older list? list? Yeah, but it they, but they list. definitely brought it back. No, 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 no. They no, didn't they bring didn't. it back. It was, it was just a conversation I had with someone, and I just decided to look it up. Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. So this is all me. You can put the blame on me. I thought it was just some old white guy shit. Let me check on Africa. Is that, how you, is that how you look shit up? Poorest. Siri, I'm pissed.
What are the poorest African countries? <laughs> I'm glad you said it, Vlad. I'm pissed off about Black Panther too. <laughs> the thing about Killmonger is the fact that they made him the enemy, right? They made him the enemy. They made him angry. They made him abusive. It's like they, they made him the enemy because to me, he was metaphoric for when black people complain. He was, well, uh, David Banner actually compared him to Malcolm X. He was, it was, it was Malcolm X versus Martin Luther King. It was definitely, you know, Martin Luther King was about passive resistance, right? Let a motherfucker hit you and you take it, which is stupid as shit to me. And I'm not dogging Martin Luther King at all. I would never disrespect my black leaders ever. I would never do that. Maybe Al Sharpton, but I would never disrespect because I don't like Al Sharpton taking sexy pictures with that big ass head. You should stop doing that shit. Al Sharpton is like, I'm going to take a booty shot. <laughs> All the girls are going to be on my dick. <laughs> shit, that's a sexy motherfucking picture. I'm going to send you a dick pic, baby. Hold on. <laughs> you know what I mean? Relax, Al. <laughs> and so <laughs> look like a stop sign, son. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> okay, anyway. So... Mal uh, Martin um, believed in passive resistance, which he learned from Gandhi, by the way. Gandhi mm -hmm. studied passive resistance. But if you look at Gandhi, you see why he did, because he's skinny as fuck. He can't fight. You know what I mean? And Gandhi's like, you should let people hit you in their butt. What? Fuck out of here. First of all, Gandhi was a child molester, and he didn't, when he was a lawyer in South Africa, he did not represent the black South Africans because he said they were subhuman. So fuck Gandhi. And um, another thing too is Malcolm X said, if you hit me, I'm gonna defend myself. That is a natural thing to defend yourself. Vlad, if someone hit you, you'd be like, the fuck are you doing? You would try to defend yourself. You, that's a normal thing. You know, but Martin was like, no, we should march. And, and Malcolm was like, I'm tired of singing, we shall overcome. And we singing and they spitting on us and punching us in the face. Bullshit. Imagine, imagine if your cells, like, let's just say every creature on this planet has a defense mechanism. Everybody does. Mice mm -hmm. do. Plants do. If you fuck with them, they're going to defend themselves. Black people have been relegated to singing and marching. All the hell we catch. We don't defend ourselves. But then when we see each other, we want to fight each other. We'd be the first one like, yo, nigga, what the fuck you looking at? So, like, really? But then the white cops came around and you was punking out. You know, when your white boss came around, you was punking out and tap dancing. But when it's like, our, each other, be like, man, oh, hey, man, let the, let's see that nigga again, though, for real, though. Well, fuck. I mean, to, to, be, to be fair, uh. I mean, number one, I don't, I don't believe in, you know, passive resistance. Yeah, I have guns in my house and, you, you know, I mean. You have guns in your house? Lots Damn. of them. <laughs> I have a water And uh, I'll be you like know, this. I, I've, been, I've been in a handful of violent situations myself, but. You, oh, have you? But you, yeah. you know, you're Russian, you're Russian dealer. You have to have guns. I, I, think, I think what what Martin Luther King accomplished. Of course. During that time. Sure. Was with the media being the way it was. Yes. If he, you know, told his followers to fight back, the media would portray these black guys fighting the police and everyone would be like, oh, see, you know, look, look how violent and crazy they are as opposed to the way, the way it got portrayed in the media. It actually showed the, the wickedness and the vile side of the white supremacy that was happening and actually showed black people as victims for the first time. And, and created a, a, a level of sympathy, which I don't think was there before. And, and actually I, allowed him to accomplish what he set out to do. But I agree and I don't. Because I get where you're coming from, but I'm sorry, my grandmother's getting punched by a cop. How many times are you going to take that before people go, well, look at they're not, hey man, you hit my grandmother, I'm going to punch your face open. No, no, I, I understand I'm going to tackle that. you, you know, too. Whatever. Look at the look at the Emmett Till look, situation. The Emmett Till, right. where where, I mean, imagine just imagine this. Yeah, you're a mother, and your son has been beaten beyond you know killed Realized, and beaten yeah. beyond recognition. Yeah, but you insist on having an open casket 
Yeah. So the media could take these pictures and show the world what's yeah. really happening. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And and the the amount of you know uproar and anger that that caused throughout the United States because she decided to do that. You know she didn't want to close. She wanted to close casket. Of Who course. would want an open casket in a situation like that? But she she basically sacrificed her own feelings for the greater good. I I get that, but we're always sacrificing our feelings for the greater good. Yeah. And you you uh, you, you fuck with any other race. Fuck with the Irish. They're going to punch you back. Fuck with right. Italians. They're going to break your fucking legs. I mean, yeah. you know, everybody every, in history, every race has used violence to get their freedom. You understand? You know the Haitians? Haitians have some of the most powerful historical figures ever. Um, Toussaint and Desolines. Okay? They are in the African American Museum. You know what they did to the French? They whooped their ass. They were like... Sac passe na boule. You, we gonna fuck your ass up, and they kicked the French out. Not from singing, not from doing that. They had to whoop ass, or they were gonna continue getting beaten. You understand what I'm saying? You mm-hmm. know, I'm, I'm, and li- remember, do not misconstrue my shit. What Martin Luther King did was amazing, right. but there has to be a balance. You can only right, t- but but unlike but but unlike in Haiti, yeah, blacks were a a minority, a numbers wise, they were such a minority but that's in America. How gangster they were. Someone, right, but, but, listen, if what if what if what if some slaves didn't rebel, there would be no black people in America free to do what they want right now. If all the blacks took that shit and just got beaten, we'd probably still be in slavery. Well, we are. Well, but the, prison, but, but, but the Emancipation Proclamation didn't come from slaves Emancipation rebelling. Proclamation was bullshit, man. He wanted to save the union. He needed black people. But please. Abraham Lincoln didn't fucking Right, but, but it wasn't, well, what I'm saying is, is that Nat Turner wasn't the reason why, why slavery ended. But what, what did Nat Turner do? He killed a whole bunch of slave masters. It's what I'm saying. You, you know, know, which, you which know, I'm, I'm down with, man. Know, like, like you know I'm, I'm cool Douglas with that. Did? Frederick Douglass grabbed the whip of his master. Grabbed that shit. Like, when you see LeBron James and Michael Jordan and Ty do all those amazing athletic feats, grabbing the whip should be on SportsCenter. That's the most amazing... That motherfucker said, Motherfucker Wakanda! No, he didn't say Wakanda. The movie wasn't out back then. But, you know what I'm saying? So, you have... There has to be a point... It's like a bully. Racist people are like bullies. In every school I've been... Whenever I was in school... You know how the bully stopped bullying you? A kid stood up and beat the mm-hmm. shit out the bully, and the bully all of a sudden was friends. Because yeah. there's some times where you got to push back. You're not going to get any freedom letting people stomp on you sometimes. Sometimes you got to put your foot down. On, and I'm not condoning violence, so I don't want anybody talking that shit and, you know, all that bullshit. There's only so much you can take somebody every day. Be, it, it's, like some of these, yeah. it's like some of these nerds that come up shooting schools Half the time they were getting their ass whipped all day. Right. It's the truth. And people go, oh, I think it's mental. No, people are dicks. And you keep bullying these nerds. First of all, you need to stop fucking with a nerd. A nerd, first of all, he ain't getting no pussy. He ain't getting no pussy. So his balls are heavy every day. All right? He ain't getting no pussy. No dude that gets pussy shoots up a school. You know, and they're too tired. <laughs> You're too tired. You've been fucking all day. You're like this. I have my legs. I can't run around with artillery. You know, I've been busting nuts. Ugh, ugh. That shit, listen, nerds are usually mathematically inclined. They do their homework. So imagine them, they're angry and they're setting out to kill people. They're going to work on that shit. Nerds are a fucking ticking time bomb. That's why when you bully people, you got to learn and go, when you see a nerd, you give them a hug. You treat them. You include, no, you include girls, pull out your titty, let them suck on it, get you, put some coochie juice on their lips or something. Let them, let them feel included. You can't sit there making... With all these school shootings, why are you still bullying people? You know, haven't you learned your lesson? These motherfuckers will come get you. Right. You understand? If I, if, I, if I owned a company, I would never fire anybody. Never. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. I'll never fire them because they're coming there back. I would never fire them. I, especially ones like, but, but I have five kids. I'd be like, I'm sorry. I was just kidding. My fault. You're hired again. My bad. Now let's talk about a cellular level, huh? Let's let's go biology. What if your cells, what if your cells, when a disease came in, started singing and marching? 
What if your cells were like, we shall lo-? Imagine. You, you would, would die. die, wouldn't you? You would die. Yeah, you would die. Your body molecularly and cellularly fights, fights. What if, what if your cells were like, don't be so violent. It's just the cold. Imagine. It's so like- on a cellular level, it's a natural thing to defend yourself. Martial artists, I studied martial arts for a long time. The first thing our teacher told us was like, you don't fight. If you don't have to, avoid it. But if it comes at you, you got to do what you got to do. Even monks, those Buddhist monks that be like, oh, no, oh, no, oh, no. they fuck with them though. <laughs> See what happens. Them all be like, hold the hell, hold it, hold it, hold it. Your kung fu is no good. <laughs> Word. Fair enough. <laughs> Word up. Then they get back to... Here's another thing that Black Panther did for me. The, The women on there... My favorite was the uh, the main guard. What's her yeah. name? Deny, deny. Tupac's mom. Tupac's mom. Tupac's mom. That's Tupac's mom. Well, from the movie. From the movie is t- what? The hell are you talking yeah. about? Black Panther. The woman, the woman who played Afeni Shakur in All Eyes on Me, was the main oh, guard. Oh, okay. She's in um, Walking Dead. Okay, I got you. I was like Tupac's mom. Yeah, she did. No, so the, the she was one of my she was like my favorite character in the movie um, because she really represented black women in a great image. I mean, Angela Bassett, of course, she was dignified. But you know, with all these kind of uh, move um, TV shows like you know Housewives of Atlanta and just all those shows that make black women look like shit and look make them look ghetto and ignorant and ratchet. And I know a lot of those girls really aren't, but they want to do it for the show. Black women have enough of a shitty image. They're on the bottom when it comes to status. They're not considered the most marriable. They're just considered the most ugly, which, which they are the most beautiful, by the way. Fuck what you heard. I think you know that, sir. You know, they're the most, they're the most beautiful. They're the be- Black women have always had our backs. They've always been the ones that like, fought for us, always speaking up for us, always doing, making us. Black men, the strong black men are raised by strong black women. They're the shit. Fuck what you heard. I said it on this Vlad TV. Black women are number one. And it's not taking anything from white women. They're Asian. It's not taking anything from that. Black women need to be praised. Just like white women. Just like Asian women. Just like even, you know what I mean? They need to be praised and they need to stop being shit on by a black man. We need to stop throwing them under the bus because we're always first to do that. Enough. And the fact that they were different complexions of women that were protecting King uh, Chala. They were the guard. Because it was symbolic of black women being matri, you know, in back in the day, matriarchs were what we praised. Goddesses were what we bowed down to. They ran everything. So it mm-hmm. was also representing that, that they've always protected us. They've always been the, been the strongest. And the fact that they were bald, that shit was so gangster, dog. And now you got little black girls cutting their hair and not, because, you know, black women, they spend $1.5 trillion on hair care products every day, um, every year. 1.5 trillion. That's also described, do we re- is hair always about it? You can still be beautiful, not always have a weave. Not saying you can't do that. But it was cool to see bald black women, sexy, beautiful. You can shave your hair and be all right, because that used to be like sacrilege. Girl, you shaved your hair, oh my God! Is it gonna grow back? I didn't mean to do that horrible black vo- girl voice, but I had to do it to make it funny. Um, but you know what I'm saying? So that was a, that image, of black women was very important in Black Panther. The spear, where, you know, they used to call us, you know, racial slurs because white people are amazing with racial slurs. They're so creative, I ain't gonna lie. Jungle Bunny, god damn. It's horrible, horrible, but it's funny as hell because I've never seen a Jungle Bunny before. Spear chuckers, they used to call us spear chuckers. Like, you fucking spear chuckers? Fucking spear chuckers? You know, they'll say, you know, for, for Asians, it's like slope heads and sl- slant, chinky eye gooks. Italians, WAPs, D- Mix, Dago, you know, white people are creative as shit when it comes to racial slurs. So, spear chucker, 
When you think of spear chucker, you'd be embarrassed, but the spear is one of the smartest weapons ever used. It's one of the most ancient weapons. You got the San people in, the Bush people in South Africa now who still use the spear to get food. All they need is the spear. How, how, how are they primitive when you need all kinds of weapons? These motherfuckers got a spear, which is the smartest. Missiles, look at, think about missiles, think about anything that shoots and has a point. That's the spear. And then, the way they were using it with the martial arts shows you the level and the and right and the and the um the the detail of how amazing the spear is you know and before the bow staff that they used in China Africans were doing the martial arts that also explained we were doing martial arts before everybody but if you trace martial arts it goes back to Africa so well, there, this why this is why Black Panther was hitting so many levels for me because I was it was talking about anthropology psychology economy self-image also technology the fact that you know what we technology we use technology technology this is what i think it described what africa could be because it needs help but this is what it doesn't have to be primitive this is what africa could be we can still keep our 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 heritage but we can also use futuristic shit. to me i it described pre-slavery and it described the future of africa I saw both of those things. And the ending kind of disappointed me. The ending disappointed me when he was like, we are going to share everything. You know, remember he bought some property, which was great. And then the guy in the UN, you know, the UN is full of shit. You know, the UN's like, so what exactly are you going to share with that? I was like, Ugh, a European guy. I said, first of all, Europeans have already taken everything from Africa. You understand? There's a lady who has a TED talk. Her name, her last name is Malance. You should, she's, she's half German, half black. And she does a TED talk about how Africa, without Africa, all the continents would collapse. Africa is actually giving life to everybody because all of the, all of the resources come from Africa. They try to make it look like Africa don't have shit. Second largest continent, you know, they purposely shrink Africa on the, on the map. They even have Russia being bigger than Africa and it's not. You know, Africa is the second largest planet mass wise, land mass, and it feeds everybody. They take animals, gold, or everything comes from Africa. And the fact that T'Challa said, oh, we're going to share this with the world. I was like, that's almost like colonialism again. It's like, and then at the end, they have the white guy going, very good, black guy. Very good. It was almost like appeasement. You know, I was like, ah, shit, they kill off Killmonger, kill off that rebellious idea of us protecting ourselves. Let's share it with the world. And you know what happens when you share shit with the world? They're going to get greedy. They're going to, I think it was basically describing how Africa has been sucked of all its sources, but they didn't want to say it that way because white domination has fucked Africa up in the first place. I mean, Europeans, it's a fact. You can't get mad at me for saying it. Portuguese, French. English, Dutch, King Leopold have raped and pillaged Africa for hundreds of years. White South Africans, how the fuck do you steal African? You're Dutch. I mean, that's some gangster shit. Like, white people said, I'm gonna be African. What? That's like me saying I'm Chinese. Like, if I said I was Chinese, I grew up in China, I've no, I don't know nothing, else, and I say, hey guys, I'm Chinese. Would you believe me, Vlad? <laughs> Would you, you believe me? You, you wouldn't even say Chinese. Yeah, I'm West Chinese. <laughs> now, West I, know, I know I don't look like the other Chinese. That's because I'm West Chinese. <laughs> I'm West Chinese? Yeah. You know, I, would that be even... People wouldn't believe it because they wouldn't believe black people had that kind of power to do that. But the, So that's, for me, that movie like just took on all those different levels of things in society. Just all of those levels, they were hitting everything. And to me, I was like, oh, that's sneaky the way they did that. Like when there's like, well, you know, with white people coming in, like when that white character came in and he was like, wow, look at all this stuff. To me, he was, they were kind of hitting on, like when white people see somebody black that's smart, they go, you're so smart. You're so articulate. You're so well-spoken. You, you know what I mean? Like when they would yeah. do that to Obama, he's so smart. Yeah, he went to fucking school. He went to Harvard. Yeah, he went to Harvard. But there are a lot of black people that are smart. We've been smart. We were smart before everybody else, though. We were smart before everybody else. It's just that they don't tell us that shit. But they tell us in February real quick. 
You know what I mean? But we've been smart. But that's what that white character was doing for me when a white person goes, my God, you're really smart. How'd you know that? I Googled it, bitch. I Googled it. It's not hard. It's on my fucking phone. Fuck you. Damn, black people have been smart. There are millions of us that are really smart and will run circles around you. And the most degrees in America are held by Nigerians. Fuck off. Mm. Yes, we are the smartest. Suck it here. Take this, suck it here. You know, Nigerians don't know how to curse. We like, take this, my peanut, put in your mouth. Take it. Put, just do this for like this. You know how you talk. Do this. I don't want to say suck it, but you can have it. <laughs> Let me do my Wakanda. Huh, huh, Wakanda. Wakanda, if you want to go to Wakanda. Ha! Ah, 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 ah. Hoo-ah! That's how we greet in the street. Also, I want to tell you, I'm going to see Black Panther a whole bunch of times. You know, because I have to. It's a homework assignment, and I hope they use it in curriculum. Hope they mm. use it in the curriculum, in like, especially in African American schools or if African American history, it'll be great because it's creating history and it means a lot. And I hope that having an all black cast will be a normal thing, and it won't just have to be Tyler Perry, which Tyler, you know what I mean. Yeah. I'm not knocking Tyler Perry. I'm just saying it doesn't. We don't, we shouldn't have to wait on Tyler Perry for an all black cast. It should just yeah. be normal. It should just be, and I don't know, some people are like, oh, it was very black. I go, are your eyes racist? Was that too much to see? Oh, another black person. Another black person just went through the door. Oh, it's so black, my eyes. Do you have racist vision? I mean, what the fuck? Those were beautiful black people. They were beautiful. Oh, I mean, I'm used to seeing Meryl Streep, Colin Firth, Kate Blanchett. When I see an all-white movie, it's just a movie. It's not a black movie. When we do it, it's a black movie. It's Asian movie. It's just a movie. You know, when I see movies, I just saw a movie. I don't go, I just saw this white movie with Meryl Streep. Oh my God, Meryl Streep. <laughs> I grew up on all those grades. Let us be great for, ne- for once. Like, fuck. There you go, Black Panther. If you haven't seen it, definitely Black go Panther. see it. Rawr. Since the last time you were here, mm-hmm. Monique started her Netflix boycott. Yes. So being a stand-up comedian, in yeah. the same business as her. Mm-hmm. And having specials on, what is it, Showtime? Uh, I had a special on Showtime and Comedy right. Central. Yeah. And Comedy Central, right. What do you think about her stance that Netflix only offered her half a million dollars? First of all, I know I would have taken that shit. Because, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> she take the money, goddammit. I mean, I, I mean, I'm a mid-famous guy. You know what I mean? I'm not like, I'm, I'm a famous guy, but not really. And um, Monique has always been a friend of mine. She's not, I mean, I'm not her best friend. I did Fat Girls. I did her movie Fat Girls with her. I co-starred in it with her. I um, did Soul Plane. Um, Monique has always been an awesome, wonderful comedian. Uh, I met her in Chicago when she was a comedian. She's a giant, a, a giant in comedy. Um, she has an amazing... Um, following in the African-American community, and also other people know about her. I mean, she's, she, she was on the Parker. She had a talk show. You know, Monique has been in a lot of great movies. All right, she's an Oscar winner. An Oscar winner. You can't fucking knock that, you know? Right. Um, when I heard it, and it's, and it's tough because you go, okay, there's some things I disagreed with her on, but not a lot, but we don't know what she's going through, you see? Because every, con- every artist has like a goal they want to reach. And there's times where you go, you know what? I feel like you, sometimes you, there's a thing where you know your worth. You go, I feel like I'm worth this, you know? But sometimes your worth and how you feel doesn't match with people in business. You feel where I'm coming from? And numbers are important. And, and we all have to learn this. Sometimes we let our emotions get in the way of business. And I remember, I was told by a famous comedian, which it was actually Cosby, when I used to work for him, he said, show business, which word is the biggest? I said, business. He says, remember that shit. The show is the smallest part. You know what I mean? So when you're talking about your show all the time and your numbers aren't equating, you, you know, it is what it is, especially I, what, I, what I've learned. I used to take things personal, you know, as a comic. I used to say, well, how come I'm not getting this? How come I'm not getting that? You can in your mind feel like you're worth something, but if the numbers aren't showing, 
And I had a guy break down this shit to me at one of the comedy clubs. He actually took me in the office and said, let me break down numbers to you so you won't take shit personal. So you'll actually work on your shit, your value. And when after he broke that shit down on like the overhead and what people got to spend and bubble budgets, I was like, damn. He says, so when a comedian comes in complaining that they're not getting this, but their numbers aren't showing, I can't fucking do it. But if you are big enough where you selling out, I don't say shit. Because the comedy business is actually fair when it comes to numbers. It's actually fair. Because if you're not bringing in people, they're going to pay you accordingly. You know what I mean? Even if you're the baddest comic on the planet, are you filling in the seats? Because you got a lot of bum ass motherfuckers that claim they're comedians. I'm not calling out no names. There's some bums out there. You know what I mean? They're bums stealing people's jokes and shit like that. There's some bums. There's some microwave comics out there. I'm calling you to fuck out. There's some bum ass comics, but they're on social net media. They're, I can't get mad at their hustle. They're filling the seats. They might be the shittiest comics, have no jokes, nothing. They might be stealing shit from Def Jam. You know what I mean? But they're filling the seats and the comedy clubs are going to book them until they maybe fade out or whatever. But the lights got to be paid. Mm -hmm. Workers got to be paid. You understand? So with Monique, I thought, in my, this is just me and I'm not taking, it's not a judgment on her. I thought she should have taken them. Listen, even if she complained and said that was kind of an insult, I thought she should have got more than 500,000. I thought. I don't, I wasn't saying she should get more, you know, because like Dave Chappelle and all those guys, there's, they had hot shows, record breaking shows. Amy had a record breaking movie, all of that shit. You know, it was, it's the hype. It's like they go with the hype, man. Chris Rock's going to get what Chris Rock gets. Chris Rock's a comedy giant. What are you going to do? I thought she should have gotten more than that, but maybe not as more as them. But I thought if she felt insulted, that's her personal thing. She knows her worth. I don't know her like that, her business like that. You know what I mean? But I think she should have just taken it anyway and, and proved to them like, yo, y'all fucked up. You know you owe me more money. Then that would have been like a ha, ha, ha. Now I'm re renegotiating. I think it would have even been better. And then she could have been like, you insulted me with this shit? Look at what I do. But I don't, I don't run her life. You know what I'm saying? But what I don't like is how we are shitting on her so much. Like we're taking like this. I just think as African-Americans, especially with, it's hard enough in our business where we, a lot of comics, a lot of us don't stick together anyway. And that's the truth. We don't stick together. Black comics, the worst. I mean, I'm not, listen, mm. if you black comics are listening, you know, I'm telling the fucking truth. Some of you will get to a certain point where you've been rolling with a certain group of cats and then when you make it, you forget about them, which is some, which is some bitch shit. I think that if you're with a crew of guys and you make it, you should pull your, you pull your boys up or your, or your women up, pull them up. You didn't make it on your own. Sometimes you'll have comics that helped you get on open mics and helped you get it and you get famous and then you forget about them. Fuck them. You know what I mean? When I, t I can, I can name one dude that was one of the most helpful guys in this business that have helped, helped me and a lot of comics out when we didn't have shit. Tony Woods, a guy named Tony Woods. If you watch Dave Chappelle, he acts like Tony Woods, sort of, you know what I mean? He's like, cause Tony Woods took him under his wing. I'm not saying he stole anything from Tony Woods, but Tony Woods, one of the greatest human beings in this business, underrated guy. I always tell people, watch Tony Woods, Tony Woods, you know what I mean? And nobody has really paid it forward for that guy. They haven't paid it for, and I fucking hate that. And people have shit on me. People that I know have shit on me, and I think it's fucked up. And what we're doing with Monique is that same kind of shit. It's almost like we want to see her fail. Like we want to see her fail. I, listen, you can disagree, but the fact that we're, it's just like this bombardment of like, you know, I don't know. I, you know what I'm talking about? Well, I mean, here's the thing. I'm a, I'm a business owner. Right. So I'm looking at it from the other side, mm -hmm. right? And the way I look at it is nobody, whoever I choose to hire is, and what I offer to pay them is really up to me. They could take it well, or they, they could not take it. Right. True. If they don't want to take it, you know, and I'm, and I'm putting out numbers that I feel that I could profit off of. Because at the end of the day, the business owner is taking all the risk. That's true. 
if if nobody watches the Monique special, she's still going to get her check. She walks away. Netflix is going to take the bath. So when you put up the money yourself, you are taking most of the risk, and you should you should be taking the majority of the profits, right? Right. Because you are the one that's taking on the risk. So did, now, did so did they make up their money paying like uh, Chappelle sixty million? Did they make up their money paying yeah. Jerry Seinfeld? Well, eight? well the, I, mean, I don't is, know. The, the, this is you know Netflix. You know I, Netflix I, I, has I, a I, lot of money. A lot of and money. Five hundred thousand. I think they would be able to go. It's a drop in the bucket. I would think with all the offers they've well, given. Well, I mean, I, I own Netflix stock, and you know, so I I, I study Netflix. Mm-hmm. Essentially, the only thing Netflix is trying to do is try to get new subscribers right, and keep the subscribers they have. That's right. And they have a level of analytics based on who's watching what and mm-hmm. where to a level that no one else has ever done. Right. So they do stuff like they look at all the movies that ever get watched and they say, okay, look, this actor, this director, and this you know, uh, co-star, they, they seem to be reacting with our audience. Let's put them all together and make a little movie and see what happens. You yeah. know, by putting these people, because, you know, people are reacting to these types of people. Right. You know, they put that together and they put out films. Some of them are good. Some of them are not good. But they're just trying to keep people subscribed and also to attract new subscribers. Right. If they felt that Monique was only worth this amount of money, they offered it to her. She, she could say yes. She could say no. It is what it is. Now... By Monique coming out and saying everyone should boycott because I'm only getting half a million dollars, and you're saying this to people that probably don't make that working 10 years, yeah, I, I feel is a little bit of a disconnect, okay. number one. And number two, for example, like I just interviewed T.K. Kirkland. I understand you have a Netflix special coming up. Yes, I sure do. I shoot it April Woo! 1st down in Florida. And you know the great thing about it? I have been approached about this maybe two, three years ago. And I was turning the guys down. I guess I was just really finding my way also to find out what I want to do. And the Netflix special is deal, but here's those so great because I put up my own money to create everything. Amazon is in the picture. Amazon mm. now is trying to buy, before I take it to Netflix, they want to compete with the Dave Chappelle deal. So now, and it looks like it's possible I might not go to Netflix. looks like I might be going to Amazon because I got to go where the check is. So if you're really serious about it, this is what you should be doing. You should be putting up your own money and not complaining that someone else is not giving you that money. You know, with Vlad TV, I got screwed with all the film projects I did. So it caused me to create my own operation. Right. And the, the money was not there in the beginning. And I had to spend a lot of money and time and so forth to get to the point of where I am now. But now, I don't give a fuck who right. pays me or who doesn't pay me. Right. I put out whatever the fuck I want, and if you don't like it, you don't like it. Don't like <laughs> but it, right. I don't. I don't need anyone to green light my own projects. Mm. And at the end of the day, Monique is a big enough name that she could have done it herself. And then you know, I, I think I, I, I. But she is a big enough name. But I think that's why she felt she was insulted. I think. But but Netflix, like you said. They have their algorithms or whatever. And, you know, hey, man, I would love to be in the Netflix uh, talk. Word up. Who do, what comic doesn't want to be on the Netflix list? You know what I mean? Because I know some of the people that work at Netflix. I Yeah, you want to be part of that. You know, I want those problems. Like, only, two, only 20 million? Man, let me tell you something. You know what I'm saying? Because I feel like I'm worth that. But... Are are enough people going to see me? See, that's the thing. You gotta you gotta let that emotion go away from business. I know right. that I'm not going to get. I, I, and then I don't want to talk negatively either. Maybe someday I'll be that guy. They get offered me sixty million for whatever. But I know as far as comedy quality, fuck yeah, I can keep. Yeah. I, I'm just as good as all these motherfuckers. But in reality, guess what? I'm not. You know, I gotta build my value. You know what I mean? I don't have a hit show like that. I don't have a. You got to know where you stand. We actually were one of the first ones to report that Monique actually owes five hundred sixty thousand dollars to the IRS. What? Yeah. She should have taken that five. 
She owns which, which which may have she owes five hundred sixty thousand. Five hundred sixty. I mean, 000. I owe stuff to the IRS, but it's not that much. But I mean, right. So, and this may have gone into the thought process of like, shit. You know, I was thinking I'd do this special, and, and, and I would, pay it I would off. be good. I'd pay it off and then be good. But damn, they only offer me enough to not even pay the. But off. that's what my point is that she's speaking from. We don't know what she's dealing with. Yeah. You know what I mean? So. Like you said, tax problems. That's why she's like, yo, come on. Give me a three, five, at least five mil. You know what I mean? I think she should. She deserves a couple mil. I, I wouldn't have had a problem with that. I mean, 20, 30, I don't know about that. But like, if she said five, I'd be like, that sounds viable to me. But, you know, that's that's not me. But I, she went on The View, which I thought was dangerous. And I heard, I heard, I didn't see it, but I heard Whoopi Goldberg kind of smashed on her. You know, I think the view should be called Whoopi's view because you can't get on that bitch and talk shit. Whoopi be like, I don't even understand what you're talking about. Why? No, 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 no. This is my fucking show, okay? It's my show. I don't have time for this crap. <laughs> you know, the view is not really your view. <laughs> it's Whoopi's view. view. Whoopi runs <laughs> that shit, man. You 100%. can't say shit when Whoopi snaps on you. You're like, damn, this is your goddamn view. Well, I mean, we'll see what happens. I mean, we'll see what happens. She's got a lot of attention, and honestly, will it be right a black, now, will it I be think, against her? Will it be a blackball thing? Will it be? I don't. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think, hope not. Listen, in 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 today's economy, with so many competing platforms, you cannot blackball anybody. It's true. You know? Do you know how many labels or publicists or artists? Have, told me that we're never fucking with you or blah, blah, blah. We'll never work with you again. And we continue to get our interviews and we continue to beat our numbers and we just kind of don't give a fuck. Right. You know what I'm saying? The, that's you, can't, the... you can't blackball someone that works for themselves. Yeah. You can't. You cannot. Do you, what do you, <laughs> you know? I think you, the, the thing with the husband, everybody was talking about the husband. Like the husband might be fucking up a lot of shit. Possibly, I, possibly, because people get in your ear, man. Because I, I remember one of the one of the dopest documentaries I've seen was the Bob Marley documentary. Yeah, that was and dope. like, and it sort of showed his mentality, like when he got his first record deal, you know, with uh, was a Chris Blackwell with Island, and he asked him how much he wanted to do the album. He said thirty thousand. He's like, here you go, and like everyone around him was like thirty thousand. No, you should ask for a hundred. He's like, he said, if you don't start somewhere, you'll go nowhere. Okay. That and like he continued to sort of keep that mentality. Like, I remember at one point, you know, he wasn't getting a lot of radio play in America. Right. So they asked him to open up for the Commodores on tour. D D Bob Marley. Bob Marley and yeah. the Whalers. And, and all his bandmates were like, open up for the Commodores? We're, we're bigger than the Commodores. Like, right. like, we do fucking festivals and major yeah. stadiums. You know, Bob Marley said, no problem. You know, because he, he was guaranteed, because they said, if you do this, we'll guarantee you a certain amount of radio play in America. He said, no he problem. He had to do it. And he did it. He made, And he, he blew up even bigger in America. Sometimes I think you got to take a little bit of a, mm, to, 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 for the bigger, for the bigger picture is what I say. I believe, I think she should have took it. Even if she was insulted, I'd be like, yeah, that was, but I think she should have taken it and then proven them wrong. There you know, you because I really believe Monique could have built on that because she has a strong following. I mean, you know what I mean? I've, I've taken gigs, and I'm not even comparing my situation, but I've taken gigs where it's like, damn, the money's whack, but you know what? Fuck it. Let me, Fuck and it, it. it it's like, let me do this. It'll be a good thing, and then from there, I can talk my shit later when I prove myself. But there you go. And you never know yeah. what opportunities are going to come up from you working as opposed to you not yeah. working. And Netflix being such a big company like that, it's like you want to be. I would. I mean, you listen. Like I said, it's not. I ain't no sellout motherfucker. I don't do that kind of shit. But Netflix is such a big platform for comedians. I would be like, and it's and if if nobody else is offering me shit, Netflix yeah. is like the Nike of fucking stand up shows. Right. HBO. You know, it's HBO show. Those are the like Nike Adidas. It's like yeah. You. It's like you're a ball player going. Reebok wants to contract me. Cool. You know, Adidas. Cool. Nike. Cool. Yeah. You don't want to. You. you don't want to go to pay less shit. You know what I'm saying? You don't want to be where right. you, 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 you don't want to be sponsored by Crocs. Yeah. You don't want Crocs. You don't want Crocs. Right. And to me, for <laughs> for for Monique, I don't know how much stand up she does, but she's not in the conversation when you think of stand up. You think of Dave Chappelle, Rock, set. You know, you think of guys that are always. So 
I think it would have been amazing for her because people, when she goes on the road, she can do a thing from that and it yeah. would just get her even more money. That's just my theory. I'm on the outside of it, but I just think that you know, we shouldn't be so fucking hard on her in public like that. Fair enough. I ain't down with that shit. That's like Fair enough. So we need to we need to be like she she checked um Charlemagne. Did you see that? Yeah, I saw it. She checked Charlemagne because he called her the donkey of the uh you know donkey how Charlemagne goes, we're gonna call her the donkey of the the donkey of the day. That's what we're gonna call her. She's the donkey mm -hmm. of the day. You know what I'm saying? That's what we're gonna call the donkey of the day. What she should have done was maybe you should do some theaters. That's what you need to do, do some theaters. We're going to call her the donkey of the day. And then she, Monique, I love Monique. She goes, Charlemagne, Leonard, isn't that your name? That's your name. Were you raised by your grandmother? Where are you from? Where are you from, Leonard? She kept calling him Leonard. Where are you from? Like he said, I'm from South Carolina. He's like, did your mother raise you as a gentleman? What else? She raised you as a good boy? Huh? How am I? Your sister. Uh, but boy, Monique, oh, Monique <laughs> might end up being a pastor. <laughs> She might be. A, I, I have love for Monique, so I, yeah. I don't want this to Shout even to come Monique. as some putting her down. But we need to stop doing that public shaming of her. Fuck that. I feel you. That's bullshit. Have you ever met Richard Pryor? I, let me tell you, I met his wife, mm. but I, I talked to him on the phone when he was sick. Because my friend Maya DiGiorgio is a comedian. She did a, she did a, 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 a documentary called Jest, the, a Jester, is, it was, I forgot the name, but she did it about comedians and she interviewed Richard Pryor and I got to talk to him on the phone and he was a little sick and that was like, that was heavy to me. I was like, mm -hmm. man, that was cool. You know what I mean? Why, why you ask about Richard Pryor? Well, there's the whole Quincy Jones thing. Yeah, that's, yeah. Quincy, Quincy apologized. He, he, I don't, because his he didn't daughters. It, he, he didn't take it back, though. <laughs> yeah, the thing about it is, first of all, Quincy Jones is Quincy Jones. Quincy yeah. Jones has seen everything. He's mm -hmm. from the 40s and 50s. He was in jazz. He was in the bebop time. Think about how they lived back then. They lived hard. They drank hard, partied hard, fucked hard, the whole nine. Quincy wasn't lying. I don't think he was lying. He was like, Michael Jackson ain't shit. I'm going to let you know he's a fucking bitch. Uh, uh, you know what else? You know, it's really, really, you know, he talks cool. He's from that day. Listen, man, yeah. I'm going to tell you something. You know, uh, 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 Richard Pryor fucked Marlon Brando. Of course he did. I know he did. I saw it. They would fuck each other all the time. <laughs> Richard Pryor fucking Marlon Brando? That's like, hey, man, I'm going to fuck you in the ass, Jack. <laughs> Shit, I can't wait. Shit. Goddamn. And Marlon's like this. Hey, I could have been a contender. I don't, I don't know, Richard. What are you doing? Get away from me, Richard. He's like, I'm going to get that ass, goddamn it. Shit. This is some good shit. You white boys got some good booty, Jack. Goddamn. <laughs> shit. <laughs> well, Richard Pryor's widow actually kind of confirmed it. Here's the thing. She confirms everything that he did wrong because he was whooping her ass. Mm. You know, he beat know her that. up. He beat her up a lot. The white lady, yeah, his last wife, he beat her up a lot. So <laughs> she could be like, yep, he did do it. He did. He fucked all kinds of people in the ass. No, but I mean, she was there. So I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Right. Richard's the greatest comedian ever, you know? Right. And you know something? Me, me and Willie D, we, we were talking about this the yeah. other night. You know, because I said, you know, Richard Pryor is probably the greatest black stand-up comedian he's ever. A comedian. And Willie said, Willie said, no, black. he's actually the... He's actually the greatest stand-up comedian yeah. ever. Yeah! And I thought about it, and I'm like, shit, you're right. It's like, I say Eminem's one of the greatest white rappers. And that's white rappers. It's like, you in your head, you're going, he's the, okay, then who's the greatest comedian to you then, Vlad? Well, no, I actually agreed with him. Once he well, said no, when it, you I, said I thought black, about it. Was that a Freudian slip? When you said, he's the greatest black comedian, was that a Freudian slip? Or was this that Vlad? Your Russian mindset. Well, he's good black comedian. Very good black. I don't know too many other. What are you, Yakov Shmirnov? I, I, I your guess. Uh, I guess when I when I think of when I think of Richard Pryor, I kind of group him in with the Eddie Murphys and the the black the Chappelle's, the, the other the other black comedians. To me, the greatest comedians are black. I mean, if you want to really have a Mount Rushmore of comedians, Cosby, mm. like Cosby was cold blooded. I mean, he's the shit. Richard Pryor. Eddie Murphy, um, Dick Gregory, 
We got, you know, there's more. There's Godfrey Cambridge, Slappy White, Pig Meek Markham. I know my history. You know, we have a lot of, we had Red Fox. We had Flip Wilson. We had so many black comedians. Now, match your white ones against mine, my black dudes. Well, there's and George I love Carlin. George Carlin. He's my one George of Carlin. Carlin, uh, who else? The, 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 first, the first one I thought about is George Carlin. But Carlin loves love prior. Yeah. And what else? Go on, name your name your lineups. Weak? Go ahead. See, you ain't got nobody. What, Milton Burrow? What you got? Three Stooges? <laughs> Fuck you got. <laughs> what you got? What you got? Yeah. What you got? Come on, you can't even think about it because all of them are black. Go ahead. What you got? No, go ahead. Go ahead. No, 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 no. Ber so Richard Pryor is the best fucking comedian, period. Period. End of story. Richard Pryor. Fuck all that shit. Go on. He's trying to, he's trying to Google some shit. White I'm comics. I'm trying to Google some shit. I'm trying to Google some shit. What you got? Shit. What you got? You ain't got shit. Uh, nope. Seinfeld is not your favorite. L Louis C.K. is pretty dope. Louis dope. Of course. Louis great. What else? Steve Martin was pretty exceptional. Steve was all right. He couldn't fuck with Richard. And that's, nah, he's all right. Go ahead. And I'm not taking nothing from Steve, but mm, go ahead. Yeah, no, I mean. I'm you really ain't got up shit. With, you look really, really, George Carlin, Robin Williams was pretty amazing in Rob his day. Robin was pretty amazing. Rob, yeah. but George Carlin, remember this about George, because I'm a Carlinite. I call myself a Carlinite. George Carlin grew up in Harlem. He was in the Irish part of Harlem, but he would always hang out with the black and Puerto Rican guys. So George Carlin's influence was from black culture, a lot of his stuff. That's why he was so real and so honest. Even though he started off as the, you know, the hip, the hippie web, web weatherman, he did goofy shit. Everybody did because Richard Pryor wanted to be Bill Cosby. You know, Bill was clean, and he he saw him on the Ed Sullivan show, and Richard was like, "I want to be that guy." But then Richard was like, "Fuck that." And his first album was Crazy Nigga. I'm a crazy nigga. He said, I'm the dude. I was raised in a bordello in Peoria, Illinois, man. I want to be, I'm going to separate from Cosby. But Cosby influenced um, Richard Pryor. Because Cosby, if you listen to Cosby and you listen to Richard Pryor, it's the same almost. Because Cosby was like, you see, my daughters, I got five children. And you see that hole, you see, and the thing, and then you see, and then he put it in, and I said, get out of here. You know, now watch Pryor was like, you niggas, you motherfucking shit, goddamn. It's the same kind of intonation. You know, and you white people, you some funny motherfuckers when you curse, Jack. You know, and it, but his breathing was different. He would do that. You some funny motherfuckers, Jack. Shit, goddamn. Can you imagine if Richard Pryor saw Obama? He's like, we got a nigga in office and shit. Goddamn. If I was president, I'll put my dick right on the Oval Office. Goddamn. I'll fuck the whole thing. Jack. You see, but he was an influence. And even yeah. George Carlin was like, George Carlin had this rhythm about him. You know what I mean? He's like, I know you don't like what I'm talking about, but fuck you. Boom. But he was, he was getting that. He was around black people. Like... Even in the, in the service, he was a Navy guy, I think Navy or whatever. Mm -hmm. He hung around the black soldiers. He was like, because they were just more free and they didn't give a fuck. And, you know, so. But black comics are the greatest. And I'm saying that on your show. Okay, black you comedians that. are the greatest. We're the I'll fucking funniest. And we influence most of the white ones. I'm, there's Lenny Bruce. Richard Pryor liked Lenny Bruce. Lenny Bruce was a Jewish comic from the 50s, 60s and was real edgy. Changed the game of comedy, man. Lenny Bruce... You know, but most of the comics that are the that are the, the 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 legends are the black ones, and that's just even if they were Chinese, it just happened to be Chinese. But the the, the powerhouses are the black ones, period. Stacy Dash is going to be running <laughs> running for Congress in California. Oh, Stacy Dash, she is the perfect title for her. Clueless. She. Is running for Republican a uh, Republican Party, right? In California. Of course. She's reaching, man. She's still super hot. That's what makes me angry. She's still fine as shit, and she she's she's kind of fine. Where I'll almost ignore that dumbass statement she made about Black History Month that there shouldn't be a Black History Month. That BET is segregate. Who put drugs in her damn coffee, man? She said BET is segregating. What? <laughs> what? The reason why we get black things, things are called black this or ebony, 
because whites didn't give us opportunities. You think that if the world were fair, we would have called something black something? We wouldn't have said anything. We would have just been like, it's like, hey, it's a show. It's the whatever show. You know what I mean? But BET, Black Entertainment Television, was because everything was WET, White Entertainment Television. You know, that's why BET was created. I mean, how you can't be that stupid and not know that. Black colleges. You know, Wendy Williams said there shouldn't be black colleges because what if there were white colleges? Um, hello? <laughs> hello? Do you know Harvard? The guy John Harvard. That's what Harvard was named after, John Harvard. Yale mm -hmm. was a guy named um, Yuli Yale. Yale dude. They're all white guys. Hello, hey, 1600s, 1700s. I don't think we had a chance to open up a school. Things were a little rough. My hands were chained. Kind of tough. Literally. Literally. Like, hey, I don't think I can go to school. I got to get out of this slave thing real quick. I, you know what I mean? I just don't like when black people talk stupid like that. Like, that's just dumb. And I'm not trying. It's just dumb shit. Like, are you literally someone is schooling you on how to be racist or something or how to be a sellout? It's like you're being, it's like you're being like trained to be a sellout. Hey, say there shouldn't be a black history month. I mean, who does that stupid shit? Now, listen, I don't think you should depend on Black History Month. Of course not. You shouldn't just wait for February. But you should still keep Black History Month there because it, people died for that shit. Carter G. Woodson needed a Black History Month. A blast, it was Black History Week. Then, you know, but you should not, you know, Martin Luther King Day. Yes, you should have a Martin Luther King Day. You shouldn't have to wait for it to believe in yourself and try to fight your, for your freedom, but those days need to be implemented because you don't want people to forget. They're there for a symbol of you not forgetting because when people forget, then they continue their same behavior. Well, I kind of have an odd feeling that she's actually going to win. Stacey Dash? Yeah. Who is she going against? When I don't is she know. running? Th that, that's, and that's the point. Who Stacey is she Dash going is gonna against? going to get smoked. She's not going to win. Well, if I Donald mean, Trump can win, shit. See, that's that's, Damn, that's what I'm right. saying. If God. Like... And government, like, public office is starting to become a celebrity she, thing. Yeah, public office is starting, it's open to everybody. Yeah. Everything is open to everybody. If you, I think if you have enough uh, followers, you can win shit. I mean, yeah. Trump had enough followers. <laughs> yeah. And he pretty much won. So Stacey Dash may win. I'm going to watch it. I have to watch it. I have to watch it. Yeah. She's a Republican, too. She ain't going right. to do shit for black people. That's going to be unbelievable. You know, I mean, just think about when Stacey Dash has a rally, how much attention it's going to get versus the Democratic guy you've never heard of Dude, is having Stacey his rally. Dash, and then she's going to dress up and just look fly as hell. It's going to piss me off. That yeah. sucks. That sucks when you hate someone and you want to, you want to tap that shit. <laughs> You're like, damn, I hate her, man, but I want to hit that, though. I don't know if I'm a wolf for her, though, but I'm going to hit that, though, for real, though. <laughs> so uh, Lonzo Ball recently named his top five rappers. Okay. Alonzo Ball. The, is it the, the, no, that's the player or the father? The, the player. The player, that's right, the player. Right. Alonzo Ball, yeah. Right, plays for the Lakers. Uh, his top five rappers are Future, <laughs> Drake, Quavo, okay. Offset, okay. and 21 Savage. Okay. I don't know, none of them motherfuckers. Okay, of course I know Drake, Offset. He's, I think he engaged to Cardi B. Um, you know what? But how old is he, man? Uh, I think he's in his uh, early 20s, maybe 23. Boom, that's 24. that era, man. I ain't going to argue with that shit. That's his, that's his lineup for this era. <laughs> you know, I, 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 I don't think those guys can fuck with my dudes. You know, I got the Nazis and the Biggies and the Tupac. We win. I don't, I'm not, I, I dare him to wear a Cuervo shirt. Wear a Cuervo t-shirt since you love him. I can wear a Tupac t-shirt. I can wear a Biggie t-shirt. I can wear Eric B and Rakim. I can wear a Wu-Tang. I wear a lot of Wu-Tang shit. But nobody goes, yo, man, take that shit off, you little bitch. I dare you to wear a, a Drake shirt. Where it, this is when you know your rappers are dope. When you can wear their t-shirt while they're still alive or dead. Come on. Wear, wear an Offset t-shirt, man, since you love him so much. Wear a Future t-shirt. I dare you. Go ahead. Well, uh, I was actually wrong. Lonzo's only 20 years old. This is what I'm saying. So, like, I'm, I'm from a different era. We're from different eras. You know that. We're from, 
Mm-hmm. We, I like my shit, and young people still like the old school shit. You know what I mean? So those are your favorite rappers. When you're 35, 40, go back and listen to Cuervo and those guys and see if you still like it, if it's classic shit. Nope, you're going to be listening to Mob Deep. You're going to be listening. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm proud of my era. Mob Deep, damn right. Tribe Called Quest, damn right. De La Soul, Public Enemy, damn right. Even Jay-Z is still old school and he's still relevant. Those mm-hmm. are our dudes. Our well, dudes. You know, we actually just dropped the interview that you and I did last time where, where I said that Nas versus Kendrick. There's no I've never, versus. I've never thought about this before. Nas wins. Come on. Nas wins. I might have to say Nas wins. as a rapper. Yes. I, I like Kendrick more than Nas. <laughs> I think you purposely, I swear, I think you purposely do this. I think you're, I think and, you're and, just and, like doing that. And can I tell you He's why? He's not a better rapper than can Nas. I, can I tell you why? I think they're just totally different, but these, now how? 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 I feel that Nas essentially rhymes today like he was rhyming back in 90 whatever. What do you want him to do? Kendrick, you've seen an, you've seen him evolve, and you've he seen him change same. his life, his his, no, his wants, style. That's his voice. When you hear, what are you talking about? Kendrick sound. If you listen Kendrick to old Kendrick like and a new little boy, <laughs> but he just does. Be humble. And I love his stuff, but it's like be humble. He, 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 he when I saw him in concert, I could barely hear his voice. Be humble. He's a little guy. And I'm and remember this is not a diss on Kendrick because I think he's one of the rap gods, man. He's gonna he's gonna build himself as a rap god. I love Kendrick. I support Kendrick. But I'm saying voice wise, like that's like saying Method Man should sound different. When Method comes on the track, you'd be like, oh shit. When Method does his breathing, yo, it's shit is hot. You you stick with what your voice is. What are you talking about? I saw like on, on message forums, like it exploded, like you know, 200 comments, everything else like that. But the thing that people were pointing out mm. that kind of goes back to my, you know, sort of my side of the of the argument, okay, is that Kendrick has never dropped a whack album. I've never listened to a whole Kendrick album. Okay, all all of Kendrick's albums are really, really solid. I actually interviewed uh, Tere. Okay, and he asked Nas, "Dope." Well, off camera, you and I were talking about. Vlad TV interviews that you've seen, yeah. and there was a Mark Lamont Hill one. Yeah. And in that interview, I believe was the first time that I called Nas the worst beat picker of all time. Wow. And wow. Mark said I was crazy. Well, I can speak to this. I have discussed this exact issue with Nas. Um, I, I don't entirely agree. I think if you look at Thief's theme, um, you know, Illmatic. I mean, the beats on Illmatic are incredible. Thief's Theme, some of the other stuff on Street's Disciple. I mean, Street's Disciple is my second favorite Nas album, and I think a, a lot of the music there is fantastic. But, to your point, I asked Nas once, do you know what the biggest criticism of you out there is? And he said, yeah, it's the beat picking. I, I know this. You know, he knows, he knows this is out there. And he had a really interesting comment about that critique. He said, I don't want it to be too easy. I could pick the hottest beats. Everybody comes to them, comes to him with their hottest beats. Just like if you're in Hollywood, if you're Will Smith or George Clooney, you see the best scripts first. Nas and Jay-Z see the best, hear the best beats first. But he's like, if I just pick all the hottest beats, that would be too easy. I want it to be a little harder for me. So it's part of him adding to the challenge of being Nas and making Nas music. That's how he looks at it. Yeah, well, yeah. cool for him because Nas, to me, is one of the greatest rappers ever, plain and simple. I like Kendrick Lamar. I like him. I like what he stands for. I like what he does. I support the guy. But I would rather listen to Nas all day than Kendrick Lamar. I mean, and I like Kendrick. I do like him. I, I really do. But for me, I love Nas. Voice-wise, the whole nine. I don't mind. And like Nas and Kendrick came together and did some 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 songs together. Uh, There's one I called think, Kings. The, yeah. The King, I love that shit. This shit is hot. But mm-hmm. first of all, it's comparing apples and oranges. 
hey, who's better, Tupac or Biggie? They're both good. They're in their lane. I'm so tired of this fucking, they're not the same. First well, of all, Kendrick learned from the Nas's and learned from the Wu-Tang's and learned from the right. um, Chuck D's. He learned from that. He's a student of that. He is an offspring of what came before him. That's like saying, who's better, Jordan or LeBron? First of all, Jordan's the greatest basketball player. Fuck what you heard. Uh, uh, okay, but, so, but so, so he, that he means... But he learned from Jordan. Jordan okay. learned from Dr. J. I mean, yeah. Okay, you know? so that means that you say that Rakim is better than Nas. They're two different kind of rappers, man. Nah, I don't compare. I don't say that. I like Rakim is my favorite because I would say like almost maybe Nas learned from Rakim. Yeah. You know, because Rakim is ahead of his time. That his wordplay, shit's crazy, man. And he didn't yeah. curse. He almost sounded like he did, but he didn't. You know <laughs> what I mean? So they're all like sort of like an influence of each other. You know, I'm not gonna say Buster Rhymes not good. Buster Rhymes has his own lane. Who who rhymes like that? No one does. And Busta has a certain type of beat that you need with his ha ah, with his voice needs a certain kind of beat. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. I'm putting everybody in their own category. I'm tired of this shit. I'm like, it's too much. Jay-Z is in a class by himself. Nas is in a class by himself. Rakim is in a class by They're all, it's like, it's like the a, a, a superhero. They're all in the Justice League, man. They're all like, you know what I mean? It's like they all stand together, like boom, they're all dope. Like, I would, I love when they collaborate with each other. Like, Red Man, I love Red Man. I love meth. Are you serious? Like, these are the, I love the hip hop I came up on. Fuck all that. You can keep this that. shit. Except for J. Cole and Kedrick and shit. <laughs> but I'm sure there's some other guys coming. And, and like, like um, what's his name? Um, Jada Kiss. Jada's nasty. Fuck Jada's out dope. of here. Styles P. Jada. Come on. Yeah. We got some, and they're still making shit. Ghostface still making shit. Rayquan. Please. Yep. We're not going, old school ain't going no fucking way. We're forever school, bitches. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. That was unnecessary. We recently interviewed Ayanna Jackson, who was the one who accused Tupac of rape and oh, got shit. him locked up. Oh, shit. Did you see this interview? No, I didn't see it yet. You didn't see it yet. You heard about it? I heard about it, but yeah. I didn't see it yet. Yeah. Should I talk about it? Yeah, let's talk about it. Go ahead. What happened? Well, I mean, we, we did this interview. I held, it, I held on to it for about seven months. Mm -hmm. And I finally decided to drop it. Okay. And, you know, this is the woman who claimed that, you know, Tupac basically allowed her to get gang raped by, by his friends. Wow. He, he, went, he got locked up for a first degree uh, uh, sexual assault, I believe. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, he got out on appeal and then, and then he died. Right. When we put this interview out, mm -hmm. she got torn to shreds by the, the Tupac community. Did. Of course she did. Tupac's an icon. <laughs> Everyone called her a liar. Of course. There, there of was course. a couple parts where her story kind of was a little inconsistent and so forth. And, but what it did was it sort of showed for the first time. Mm-hmm with the whole Me Too movement and all these men, like the Russell Simmons of the world yeah. and, and so forth, who have been accused and have denied these accusations. Mm -hmm. For the first time, you see an accuser actually get seriously cross-examined. Because, you know, my interviews are, are no joke. Like, right. I, I sat there and hit on every point. Right. And some of the stories were a little bit inconsistent. And for the first time you could look at accusations and say, well, what about the Tupac girl? Remember how her story wasn't exactly what she claimed it was? And it sort of opens up the door to, well, how many times are men being accused and it actually didn't quite happen the way the woman said it did? Right. First of all, this shit ain't gonna fly. Tupac is too much of an icon now, you know? He's too much of an icon. It's like, it's too late. That's like someone coming out on Biggie. Nope, it's not gonna work. And then it looks, it looks like you're trying to shut down our, his iconism. You're trying to shut it down now. It almost sounds like someone says, let's come out on this fucking Tupac guy. It almost feels like somebody that hated Tupac says, let's bury this dude. Let's bury his legacy. 
You know, like Trump's yeah, trying well, to do I, I, I got Obama. accused of that. I, I got accused of trying to mess up Tupac's legacy. You did? Yeah. For, for putting, for, Well, for putting out this interview. I, I don't think you tried to mess it up. I think that I, you... I don't, you, I don't you, think you, so either. You might be trying to maybe call her out on her bullshit. Well... I mean, you you might have brought her... You, I, this is what I'm saying. You might have said, you know, man, I'm not... I'm kind of skeptical of this chick, and I want what... I want to see what the public believes. That's how I'm taking it. I don't well, know. I, I took it as here is someone that was instrumental in Tupac's story. Okay. You know, it, she is who she claims she is. Right. This is, she was there. She experienced this. Let her tell her side of the story and let the public decide right. how they want to take it. Okay. And, uh, you know, certain people did side with her and say, yeah, you know, under this, because it's one of those things where it's, it's a little bit hazy, right? Because. She came to see him, right? Yeah. She came to fuck with Tupac. Yep. And at one point, some guys came in the room and he said, well, this ain't my girl, I'm out. Whatever y'all do is whatever y'all doing. Bye, Felicia. Kind of like that. First of all, you're fucking with gangster rappers, man. Like, they act like you're not going to meet them at a Barnes & Noble. <laughs> Tupac's like, believe me, I'm, meet me at the Barnes & Noble. We're going to read some books. No. It's, you, 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 I'm not, listen, and I don't want anybody to misconstrue shit. You don't deserve to be raped. You don't deserve any of that shit. But mm -hmm. you got to know where the fuck you're going, man. Have you ever had anyone accuse you? Gang rape like me? This? No. <laughs> but I think I'm going to come out. I need to do another, a new interview. <laughs> have you ever had oh, a woman man. accuse you? Have you ever had a woman accuse you of something that you didn't do? Um... No, um, uh, nobody, nobody accused me of anything. No, nobody accused me of anything. I know one a girl I dated said that I raped her, kind of, because when she, I was dating her, I, 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 got, I guess she didn't want to have sex. And I was like, oh, come on. And I was just like bitching about it. Then we had sex, and she said I raped her. Hmm. Yeah, because I like coerced her into, I didn't do anything physical. I don't rape people. So, I, so she said, yeah. You, you, it's, it's rape because I didn't want to, but you were like, kind of like coercing me. And I was like, come on, I, that's rape too. I'm like, Shit. And what happened? What happened with that? Nothing. But I was like, how did I rape you? I was like, I've never raped any. I mean, I've never raped anybody. Did I mentally right. rape you? I don't, I, how did I rape you? I'm like this. Oh yeah. I'm raping your ass. Oh, your ass. I'm raping you now. I mean, I, I, I don't know. I, I've never physically like, give me some, never, I've, Never done that in my life. Well, you know, it's interesting. I just had T.K. Kirkland on here. I remember in Atlanta, Georgia, I dated a waitress at one of the comedy clubs. Had sex with her. The next morning, I um, had some running around to do. Came back, picked up, dropped her off to see her sister. Saw each other the next night, but I was with another girl. We sitting at the show. The girl's around my shoulder. The girl, she walks past me. I'm not being disrespectful. I say hello because it wasn't like we was in love with each other. We're not. We're not married. You know, I'm. 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 I'm a gentleman. I. You know, I'm a player. I leave town, Vlad. The owner calls me and says, "TK, you got to get back here. This young lady said you raped her." Mm. Now I fly back. I talk to the detective. We had nothing to hide. Told him everything. Have gave him exact times of things went down. And what people don't know, I press charges against this, this woman for lying. Because what people need to know in the state of Georgia, if you get convicted on rape, it's 25 years to life. Damn. That's insane. So I had this person um, convicted and sent to prison because she lied on me. Oh, she actually went to prison. Oh, she went to jail. For how long? Um, she got two years. TK's like, T to the motherfucking K and get your ass in the cell, bitch. <laughs> He's like, I don't understand why a bitch would lie on my motherfucking ass. See, that's your problem. See, who bitch, raised you? Who raised you? <laughs> who raised you? You can't fuck with T motherfucking K. I'm from the streets. See, I'm a gangster motherfucker. You bitch, your ass is in jail. I hope they feed you uh, syrup sandwiches for a long motherfucking time. <laughs> that's my man. You see, yep. that's, that's scary. 
That's some scary shit because a woman can be mad at you. Maybe like she's like, fuck you. I'm mad at you. Let You didn't cuddle with me. And then he tried to rape me. That's fuck. That's taking advantage of that kind of shit. And that's not cool because dudes do rape women. They do take advantage, do shit like that. But then there's a thin line, man. It's like, what's going on? That's why when I talk to a woman, I'm like this. My hands are up. I'm like, hi, how are you doing? You see my hands? Record that. I record my shit. Take pictures. I, I'm like under, you know what I mean? Put your yeah. hands up where I can see them. No, I remember uh, when Nick Cannon, when I interviewed him a few months ago, he yeah. said that you got to be careful how you approach somebody. You got to be careful on how you, I say, oh, at this day, I'm high-fiving bitches all day long. <laughs> I'm not hugging. <laughs> What up, girl? What close picture. How you doing? Yeah, <laughs> like, nah, I feel you. Because in that sense, you don't know. You, we're, it's, you're vulnerable as a person in position because they can shoot shots at you all day long. And that's to me, like, I'm a person who lives my truth. So I have, I don't fear anything. And I, I'm, I don't chase women and do that type of stuff because I'm, that's just not my character. All right, when I hug, I hug from the side. You know, and you know, don't, don't don't go like that. Yo, what's up? You know, guys like to put their, they want to put their dick right on your 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 pelvis. They want to be like, yo, I don't get no hug though. I don't get no hug. Come on now, I don't get no hug. <laughs> um, you know we friends. Come on, I ain't good. Come on, girl. You know we just friends. I don't get no hug. I don't get no hug though. Oh, word. Come on, girl. I don't get no hug. You know what I'm saying? Like. Because girls be like, when girls don't like you, they'll be like, all right, I'll see you. Bye. They'll, they'll, they'll make sure their titties don't hit your chest. Because you know we wish we had hands on our chest. When they hug us, you wish your hands could just go like this. Oh, we're not going to squeeze the shit out that. But you got to be like, and you try to like, all right then, later. All right then. Right? You ever, you ever hug a girl like that and go, no, that's kind of rapey. That's kind of rapey. I'm the only right one? Oh, okay. That's kind of rapey. It's very rapey. But it's yeah, weird it's because when you're in a relationship and a girl wants to spice up the relationship, she wants you to be rapey. It's weird. She, she's like, choke me, motherfucker. You're like, damn. That's the shit you guys have been complaining about. And then now all of a sudden she's like, oh, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, nigga, what? Yeah, harder, motherfucker. Word. You ever? I mean, no. When I'm talking about when you, it's consensual. Yeah, they want no, you to do I mean, rapey I've, shit. I've, I've choked girls during sex. You've though, choked you girls know? during like, you want to choke? Yeah. You want to choke? Huh? You want to choke from Vladimir? You want to choke? I give you choke. I show you very aggressive sex. I come to fuck you. Good, huh? You lack? You lack? Do you okay. lack? You lack? <laughs> I choke. Okay. Vladimir will choke you. No problem. This is what I do to girl. <laughs> All right, and on that note, and on that note, we're gonna end it right there. Godfrey, yeah. <laughs> always you a pleasure. Talk with what? Me? I teach you lesson. I smack booty. You like to smack booty? I teach you lesson. Tell you in Russia we got a strong grip. I teach you lesson. Huh? You want? Yes, I'll take your neck, crush it. Is what I do to you? Eh? You like? I think you like girl like aggressive Russian hold, hold. Oh. <laughs> uh, I don't even know what to say right now. God know one thing. Wakanda forever! Wakanda forever. Uh, Till uh, next time. Uh, uh, ha! Uh, my man. Peace.